Thanks for tuning into our podcast. I refuse to say the name out loud. This is Dion. And this is Anniki. Our podcast is two degenerate furries who happen to live together, turning their normal rants and trailing off into a premiere listening experience about design. Content! For the masses. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare for some spicy hot takes and some absolutely Antarctic ones. We hope you enjoy our general sense of laxness and crust. We're doing this all pretty much spur of the moment and there's gonna be some mess. Some mess. A lot of mess. <laughs> Okay, now we can actually start the podcast. Cool. Welcome to number five. 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 This is our friend Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2. I'm literally the real life Roxas. That's him. We got him here on our podcast as a guest My today. My heart hurts. <laughs> we feel that, buddy. Teehee. And... <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, buddy? <laughs> I'm sweaty and nervous. You wanted to be on the podcast, buddy. I know. Welcome to the worst podcast. You're the first guest we've had and the first episode right after we ruined our podcast. So there's a lot of weight on you, buddy. <laughs> Actually, there's kind of not because <laughs> the expectations can really, they can only go nowhere from Listen, here. <laughs> we need you to save this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're desperate. We don't know what to talk about anymore. I'm here to fix everything and sound like both of you at the same time. And today, wow, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> today we're here to talk about nostalgia. That is the topic that uh, he wanted to cover because we couldn't think of anything because we're out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our long-running podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what did they only have five episodes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. God, we're doing it again. <laughs> anyway, nostalgia. <laughs> we're all hanging out because it's our usual Saturday D and D night. We just finished watching Shrek. <laughs> That's a nostalgic movie. Takes you back to the sweet, sweet two thousands when you were innocent and nothing mattered. And everything was on VHS. Everything was transitioning to D&D. DVD? <laughs> DVD? <laughs> Shrek had some good DVD menus. Shrek 2 had the best DVD menus. I would literally watch it for like 30 minutes and just laugh my ass off and be like, what was I doing again? I remember falling asleep to DVD menus in the background. That, that's a nostalgic feeling. Just not even watching the movie? Yeah, because uh, my brother and I had already watched the movie, and we shared a room together, and we just fell asleep because the DVD menu was on. I'm pretty sure I, like, had dreams with, like, the Shrek character, the fucking Shrek 1 DVD menu with Donkey going, pick me, pick me, who oh, pick me? <laughs> I, I think that's, like, burned into my brain. <laughs> that explains a lot about your personality. <laughs> I had the Ricky Bobby one, and it was literally just him running, like, up and down thinking he's on fire, and it's really <laughs> jarring to just wake up to someone screaming in the background, but being like, yeah, that's Sounds normal. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, my mom would, like, watch a whole bunch of DVDs just, like, everywhere in every room of our house all the time. <laughs> so I definitely have had that experience, but I really can't point out, like, a very specific time. It was just sort of, like, a vibe. The Shrek playing in the kitchen. That's just <laughs> how it is. That, I'm not exaggerating. Like, we had, <laughs> we had DVD players in, like, every room in the house. Like, I think the only room we didn't have a TV in was the bathroom, and we were thinking about getting one. Oh, that TV in the bathroom is like, that's living. <laughs> that's what I thought all rich people were like. <laughs> that's how they were actually like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Being a rich kid, like, 
fucking watching Shrek 2 in the bathroom. Can you imagine? You, you like, fart on the toilet at the same time Shrek rips a fat <laughs> one into his pond. Like that's, that's immersive. <laughs> 4D movie experience. <laughs> Smell what Shrek smells. <laughs> it's those fucking Twinkies. <laughs> Do you guys remember that, like, some movies came with, like, scratch and sniff cards? No one I'm glad, honestly. <laughs> that was oh the thing. Oh my god, I do remember that. Do you remember when they used to actually like include promotional stuff like the uh, the Pokemon movie? I remember the promises on the box, but as a broke ass child, <laughs> we always got our DVDs either rented or like uh stolen from Blockbuster. <laughs> something like that. So it's always like, ooh, brand new. 3D glasses or something for Spy Kids 3 or whatever. And there was like, there wasn't jack shit uh, in there. You're lucky if there's a DVD in there. <laughs> it's a DVD to Spy Kids 2, and it's very sad. <laughs> uh, I <laughs> I remember having the Shark Boy and Lava Girl, like, 3D glasses just around my house. <laughs> so, like, not in the case or anything, just around. Like, beat up and broken, too. Just in case. That's a movie I've been wanting to read watch at some point in my adult life because uh i don't remember much about spy kids but i remember it was like the shit when it came out and i feel like i could watch it and be like stupidly entertained by it it's like a fever dream but also like a shit post and it sounds amazing yeah i, I really want to it feels like the <laughs> exact kind of thing that could definitely be reindulged in in this era <laughs> oh hell yeah maybe that's next hangout sessions we watch spy I don't kids know where we're gonna find spy Spy Kids. <laughs> I know. Is that on Blu-ray? <laughs> Everything's Let's go digital. get Spy Kids on Laserdisc. Oh my god. <laughs> we can use my mom's voodoo account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you to, like, break out a Spongebob reference because I know you. I'm holding it in as best as I can. <laughs> All right, what was the one on your mind? Why, God? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Roxas has an encyclopedic knowledge of Spongebob quotes, and uh, it's incredible. And obnoxious. That's okay. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quote for everything. It's fine. If you were worried about this entire podcast just becoming us, like, quoting 2000s-era cartoons like Billy and Mandy, oh, uh, sorry, it's it's become that. <laughs> it's half my brain anyway. Ah, somebody help me! <laughs> raggle, raggle. <laughs> Please pass the egg salad. <laughs> we just said that completely out of order. <laughs> Just like my it's mind. Like it reverted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember the rewind noise on VCRs? That's nostalgic. <laughs> I don't think the mic is gonna pick that up. Here, I'll do it really close to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, Kiki's delivery service <laughs> backwards. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a lot of VHS memories. We kicked on the DVD like the moment it became like popular. I do remember a lot of Disney movies on VHS, but I don't think we had a lot else. I remember how my copy of Stuart Little got covered in piss. <laughs> <laughs> Please elaborate. All right. So I was like five years old, right? And <laughs> yes. And I'm t here I am telling embarrassing stories on the podcast again, but this time in the front. I was five years old and our bathroom had a lock on it. And for some reason, the bathroom was locked at night. And I was like too worried about waking up my parents to open the bathroom door for me. So I went back into my room. <laughs> and I went on the floor and under my bed was a copy of Stuart Little on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Stuart Little was piss collateral damage. <laughs> Why does it always have to be something with animals with you? <laughs> I don't know. Like, dude, I don't know. I was like three, four, five years old. <laughs> Me seeing Stuart Little. I need to pee on <laughs> Please, God, no. <laughs> 
I am absolutely certain there are certain furries who would connect those brain dots, but I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I mean, Stuart Little was voiced by Michael J. Fox, so like, like there's like a Michael degree, degree of separation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know what Michael J. Fox looks like off the top of my head. Speaking of nostalgia. Marty from Back to the Future, sir. Oh, that's what I was about to say. Speaking of nostalgia, fucking Back to the Future. Oh my god. That third movie had a train in it, and when I was two, that was the sickest shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's got trains in it. Literally me up until I was like, maybe, okay, it's a bit embarrassing, but maybe like seven. <laughs> I mean, some people get into legitimate model trains, but like I was seven and I was like, still kind of like, like Thomas the Tank Engine a little bit. <laughs> I used to bully a kid who liked Thomas the Tank Engine, and I'm like, glad I didn't know you back Wait, then, I'm sorry. What was his name? <laughs> uh, uh, redacted. <laughs> Next question. Dion. Cut this out. <laughs> I have to censor my own name. <laughs> <laughs> in a part that I'm not yeah. cutting out. I'll, I'll, I'll do the fu the really funny thing where you can cut out Dion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like leaving that whole thing in. <laughs> <laughs> that way they'll know like the Dion <laughs> from that part. <laughs> <laughs> you were scared of being on a podcast. I'm sorry. You should be. <laughs> Damn, I know. So I know we're vibing, but I want to go back to the Billy and Mandy thing for a minute because I remembered the whole fucking Lord Moldy Butt thing. Oh my God. And in the context of like current day J.K. Rowling, that entire Harry Potter like parody is somehow funnier and better written. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. <laughs> God, I want to watch Billy and Mandy now. <laughs> now streaming on HBO Max. <laughs> We're not sponsored. We're cutting that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, hey, have you guys gotten your new uh, Raycon earbuds? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Oh, that's how I could hear you guys so well. <laughs> Watch out, Billy. That chicken's got a product placement. <laughs> so speaking of uh, product placement and nostalgia, the Power Rangers movie. Oh, yeah. I We can talk about the Power Rangers movie. I didn't know y'all watched that as kids, too. <laughs> I actually didn't, but um, go off, I guess. The most recent Power Rangers movie, I've only seen the excerpts with like the really obvious product placement in them. But man, can I go? about how good Power Rangers Turbo was as a movie. That movie's awesome. That movie is so good. It's like right up there with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Those movies are like on the level. That's high praise and I believe you and that almost makes me want to watch that movie because fucking Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, even with how cheesy it is, like that's a good kind of cheesy that like you can watch it and love it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's the cheesy where you can even enjoy it as an adult, even if you haven't had like nostalgia with it at all. I I would be down. I love how like Bulk and Skull are literally like the guys from uh that Halloween movie. Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus, the guy with the ice in the back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Biggs and Wedge in every Final Fantasy game. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wedge has a fucking ice shaved in the back of his head. <laughs> How do you guys segue? Um, <laughs> segue? We, we <laughs> don't. Segue? What was your guys' first video game that you remember playing and, like, absolutely falling in love with and, like, never putting down? Oh, uh, I think we all know the answer to this one because I've talked about it in, like, three episodes. What is it, Annie Key? Uh, Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel right now about it. Fuck yeah. My very first game ever was Super Mario Bros. Deluxe on the game. Boy Color. Ooh. I don't think it was actually for the Game Boy Color. Maybe it was. I don't remember, but I played it on the Game Boy Color. <laughs> and uh, after that was Luigi's Mansion and Pokemon was somewhere in there. Pokemon Red and then Yellow. And then I played Sonic Adventure 2 and I played nothing but Sonic games for 10 years of my life. <laughs> Only 10 years? Yeah, roughly. I think I, I met you like 16, 17 and then you showed me like good taste. <laughs> <laughs> remember, you can't look at who you're talking to at the podcast and say you because that will not carry over this, with three people. This this is an interactive experience. <laughs> I didn't even know who you're talking about. I'm just staring at a the, wall. The viewer is supposed to know. They have listened to the past lore of the podcast. All right, fine. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll definitely keep up with that in the future, maybe. Hopefully. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> first video game that I couldn't put down, uh, like I mentioned on the podcast before, Legend of Zelda was the first video game I ever played, the original. But I didn't fall in love with video games then. It took me a long time. So the first thing I couldn't put down was probably Darius Gaiden on the Sega Saturn, which was an arcade port. I played that a lot with my older brother. After that, I don't know. It, it all kind of becomes a blur. God, you had like a decent variation. I would say literally just nothing but Sonic for 10 years. <laughs> what about you, Roxas? Mine was probably when I was seven or eight, I had Pokemon Sapphire and I would take that thing everywhere with me. I would take it to my mom, going to like a clothing store and I'd lay on the floor and play it. I would take it to like getting haircuts. One of my fondest memories was taking it to a um, like demolition derby that my mom drug me to and my Pokemon evolved for the first time and I was trying to show everyone <laughs> with the loud screaming cars around us. <laughs> My Pokemon! My Pokemon! Why is no one else excited about this? <laughs> Demolition Derby? That's awesome! Yeah. That's so you, dude. Yeah, it was my Trico evolving into Grovile, I remember. You know what's an interesting thing about nostalgia is watching younger generations start to have nostalgia, because that reminded me, I've seen black and white, uh, Pokemon black and white, getting more, like, attention lately. It was already starting to get like a, hey, everyone, these games are good, go play them, kind of attention because they are <laughs> but now there's all the people that grew up with it that are starting to be like hey i played this as a kid it's fucking good <laughs> i i think it's strange because a lot of the people who get into content creation and then have kind of like made it enough that you've heard about it they're like kind of the generation like a couple years before like five to ten years before us where like they grew up on the stuff that like i got the hand-me-downs of and then everyone else kind of didn't really experience because it was after our generation so like me growing up with an nes and a genesis is is a little early to be honest as much as i love the things from my childhood i'm so sick of the previous generations and our generation's nostalgia because it's been milked non-stop and i hate it <laughs> There's a certain amount of nostalgia that I'm not willing to retread because, like, when I have comfort moments, I've already retread it. Yeah. Like, when I need to go play Ratchet and Clank 2 again, I do it. I don't need them to make, like, another HD remaster of a Ratchet and Clank video game. I don't need them to, like, HD remaster Drakengard or something, you know? Give them any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know I'm saying that, but <laughs> I really don't think they will because I think that whole Dynasty Warriors-esque gameplay style that Drakengard did, I don't think they want to touch it again. That now I think Square would want to touch Drakengard again anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of messed up. What about you? What about me? <laughs> what nostalgia has been milked for you to the point where you just don't want to touch it anymore? Hmm. That's a good question. Can't think of anything. Oh, you know what? Disney? I'm really, really over Disney making live action versions of like our timeless classics. Except Ugh. no one likes them now <laughs> because they're bad. But they still make money, so they keep making them, and that is the problem. Yeah, the whole general appeal of I know what this thing is, so I'll go see this movie regardless of what the reviews say. <laughs> regardless of the fact that it's almost basically guaranteed that it's going to be bad. You have have a track record of what like five live action remakes now roughly and maybe one or two of them was not that offensive <laughs> yeah it's not even like passable it's just not offensive <laughs> it didn't piss me off as much as the other ones oh my god no i haven't seen any of the live action remakes because <laughs> every time someone's like hey i watched that i'm like oh how was it it's like it was bad <laughs> <laughs> it does remind me legend of zelda and like sonic the hedgehog are kind of getting like a resurgence because of the whole nostalgia thing. And Legend of Zelda did this thing when it was first starting to get popular where they like branched out. They let the license go other places. That's how we got the Legend of Zelda cartoon. That's how we got the CDI stuff. Oh, yeah. And now they're doing it again. And that's how we got like Hyrule Warriors. And it's how we got Cadence of Hyrule. Those are neat. And I will be the only person on Earth who admits that he actually likes the Legend of Zelda cartoon. Mostly because it's just so cheesy. It's kind of cute. Yeah, it's a 
annoying, but it's like, oh, you know what? Watching it once was fine. The CDI games made the cartoon look good, to be honest. But the CDI yeah. games gave us so many good memes that I cannot help but, like, oh, yeah. love that they exist. There was some motherfucker who went out and, like, remastered the CDI games, like, scaled them up, made them more playable and everything like that. And after watching, like, a streamer play through those, I can't remember if it was, like, Vinny or who, and they actually seemed kind of decent. If all the drawings and stuff were, like, a little bit more polished, had a little bit more of a practiced hand to them, I would have been like, all right, you know what? This would be all right. But it also takes, like, years of gaming knowledge and someone to just arbitrarily go, let's make this better. Have you seen the shop dude more shoe with our RTX on <laughs> yeah <laughs> I that is horrifying <laughs> but as my dad would always say is like don't remake good stuff remake bad stuff yes or if you're going to remake good stuff do it different and honestly I think like that HD remaster of the CDI games great example of remaking something that was bad and making it pretty good like all right certainly one of the biggest hurdles for those games is the absolute unplayable ability of them. <laughs> yeah, the controls of the original CDI and everything. Any playthrough I've seen of those has been, like, watching someone, like, pull nails. It, is, it does not look like anyone has fun playing that game. It's like the game is trying its hardest to, like, not let you play it, <laughs> so it won't make you suffer through it, and I don't know if that's great or not. It sure is an experience. Intuitive game design. Bad games will make it harder for you to play the <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Sonic's resurgence, if there's a Sonic adventure of any kind, a, a new one, I will go straight back to like the 2007 me. I will be like, okay, we're breaking out the Sonic OC. We're breaking out. <laughs> Why does it have to wait that long? Why can't we just do it now? Okay, I don't want to go back to Sonic <laughs> OC. <laughs> I will. There's a certain amount of like self-shame that keeps me in check. I never want to go back and have another My Little Pony face. Uh-uh. No. That moment moment passed. That moment passed when the fucking movie came out and people were freaking out in the theater and being like weird incels. Ugh. That passed, alright? I was like, I don't want to be associated with this anymore. I might like Twilight Sparkle or whatever, but I'm good now. I had my phase, I'm out. You know, I had a very nice, very brief, sweet little, like, taint tickle with uh, Rick and Morty before it got ruined by itself and by its fans. Okay, ruined me would imply that it was a that good. But it had moments that I genuinely enjoyed in like the first couple of seasons. And that gives me my major My Little Pony vibes. Rick and Morty does. I, it really does. <laughs> the thing is, is like the show was, it was all right. And then when people started saying it was the next big thing, I was like, what? why? Why is it the next big thing? Is it the pop culture references? What is it? And then when the episode hit, the fucking, I pick Rick one of all fucking episodes. And it has that theme of like, they go to therapy, they point out like, hey, Rick, you're a bad person. It has nothing to do with how smart you are. And then everyone thought that particular part of the episode was really horrible. I was like, but it's the point of the show. It's the point of the whole show. Oh, that, that's actually thinking about it is a sweet little bit of irony about how Rick and Morty fans so badly want to be Rick. <laughs> it's always the gatekeeping neckbeards that identify with Rick and and Joker that need therapy that don't want to be told, hey, you're not a great person. That's like, no, shut up. I'm an idol. <laughs> and I'm so intelligent. Of course I have moral superiority. <laughs> I make the standards. I am a morality. <laughs> if you want to watch like a half decent adult show that'll make you question things, just watch fucking Bojack. Bojack is like the only half decent adult cartoon I've seen in years. Yeah, Bojack is great. It's so self-aware that, like, it can reflect on itself. Hey, this is really fucked up. It doesn't <laughs> idolize it, I guess, in a way that Rick and Morty kind of does. Yeah, it doesn't hand it over to on a silver platter to the audience either. It doesn't like, hey, you see the shitty thing everyone's been doing? No, it's bad. Stop. <laughs> the cycle that you keep putting yourself through over and over again, this torment that you keep doing, that's how you turn out when you think you're better than everyone else. Stop doing
doing it. Oh, I remember like the first few seasons when I was really young to the concept of like introspection and figuring things out with myself and like a new season of BoJack would drop and I'd have to uh, prepare a whole week of emotional distress. <laughs> I'd have to be like, okay, I'm not going to be functional for this entire week and I just got to be ready for that. <laughs> yeah, I think a couple years ago, something we like all were not ready for was like being harsh with ourselves in a way that was realistic because a lot of people in our generation, instead of just being like, hey, these are your actual flaws, we will make up new flaws to be upset about. Oh, these are the things that are more important that you are bad at. None of that stuff is matters or is even relevant to who we are. We were raised by a generation that has had a really bad habit of not introspecting whatsoever. So I think we're a little over cautious about it, to be honest. Yeah. And then we missed we missed some of the point. Yeah. Is this just Bojack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. That's fair. Thematic. Thematic. Say it. Thematic. <laughs> Gun click sound. <laughs> they said they aren't, but we all know the truth. We all know the truth is that I'm cutting that. No one will ever know. <laughs> and now the fun begins of, did he actually cut that or not? <laughs> the answer is yes. Today today we have a hostage, I mean guest. <laughs> Save our podcast, Roxas. <laughs> What weird Kingdom Hearts one-off is this? <laughs> that was the original goal of Organization 13. <laughs> Saving their podcast? <laughs> they would have a shitty-ass podcast. Oh, this is so fucking... <laughs> 13 of them sitting in a room with their tall-ass chairs, just like, welcome to my podcast. <laughs> they all want to talk about different things, and then it's like nobody gets any point across because everyone is like talking over each other, and it's just all bad. Demix is there for some reason. <laughs> Who gave him a microphone? <laughs> what if I told you that the tall chairs was a metaphor of how highly they think of themselves? What? Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Welcome to my life. <laughs> Welcome to our Kingdom Hearts podcast. <laughs> Don't joke about that. I want to do it. <laughs> this is how Kingdom Hearts and Metal Gear Solid are the same game franchise. <laughs> I can see I'm like so the look on your face right now. <laughs> That's dead air I want to keep in. <laughs> you can almost hear like the... <laughs> the Windows dial-up noise of like... <laughs> I'm booting up, I swear. You can hear a pen drop. That's where I added in the sound effect. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Oh, you know what you could do in the future? Huh? <laughs> if you ever had the time and, you know, just wanted to, you could take that D on and then put it in the other parts where I've said your name in the podcast. <laughs> so people are, like, listening and they get to that podcast. It all makes sense now. Put it in the intro <laughs> where I'm supposed to say my own name. <laughs> And there's like a weird like audio pause where it's like, and I'm Dion. <laughs> audio jungle. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> we have more nostalgia things to talk about. I'm absolutely certain. Kingdom Hearts is nostalgia. Yeah, we were talking about Kingdom Hearts. It's just not as like, oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. I just remembered something. Oh my god, no. I've unlocked a core memory. <laughs> no, you, you put the chain of memories in me. <laughs> Do you? remember okay so all of us know about that fucking video of the kids in the parking lot and like when it's snowing and they got like the sticks and they're like playing kingdom hearts of course we did that we were those kids i <laughs> yeah. swear to god oh oh yeah <laughs> oh god <laughs> I think somewhere I still have that buster sword you made out of, like, an old broom and, like, some cardboard and toilet paper <laughs> on it that yeah. I fucking love. Yep, I remember that. I Bro took that to school, and that's why they said no more weapons with oh costumes the next year. <laughs> I love when we set the standard. Well, I've actually done that a few times, because I remember in elementary, they have us have folders for tests so we couldn't cheat, and you had to set them upwards. I wrote the answers in the flip, the little folder Genius. part. Genius. I got caught with it, so they made us, like, cover our tests for the flat folder instead from there on. There was another thing in high school, another rule I made them change. There was the weapon one. Oh, the dance. 
Oh, yeah, because I was just fucking bumping and grinding it. And the next year, they were like, okay, uh, respectable distance, please. <laughs> Damn. Aniki is the OG rule breaker that makes schools less fun now. Well, just break the rules then if they're, the rules suck. <laughs> Scratch out all the rules and just let the kids play in a jungle somewhere. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, what we really have to do is just make a jungle gym that's so large, and then we call that a school. And if they fall off the third floor and bonk their head on the first floor... It's a lesson. <laughs> their education is natural selection. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Those who climb the best are the smartest. <laughs> <laughs> Go back, I want to be monkey. <laughs> We've progressed so hard that now we just need to regress 100% back to monkey. It's the cycle. <gasps> You're right. And then eventually we'll become so enlightened by the monkey that we'll be like, I'm tired of this shit. I have to regress to intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> regress to intelligence is the funniest fucking concept. <laughs> Another thing that was really nostalgic for that era, by Square specifically, Twooey. Ah, yes. Oh, boy, Twooey. I remember walking home from school on Main Street and 9th. They had that square there that reminded me vaguely of Shibuya. I was listening to Twooey music on the way home. Ooh, that's a good vibe. <laughs> that's a good vibe I remember. You know, actually, I don't know if I've ever admitted this in front of both of you, but for the longest time, I, 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 I like, resisted the style of, like, Kingdom Hearts and Twiwi and like Sonic and all of this other stuff because I thought it was kind of lame. Like there was part of it where I was like, this is cringe middle school high schooler stuff. Instead of just letting myself be a cringe middle school high schooler. The cringe is part of the appeal. It is the honesty and stupidity as video game essay creators like to put it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Are, are we that? <laughs> are, aren't we not? Are, are we... Who are we? <laughs> we am stupid all times. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. We're video game journalists. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you, I don't even have a journal. <laughs> <laughs> Dear video game journal. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I played Super Mario Kart 4. <laughs> Unleashed. Unleashed. <laughs> Grand Zerin. <laughs> and golf with friends. <laughs> I have a bunch of games on the shelf. Let's talk about each one of them individually. What's the oldest you one You think here? I've played video games? We got some PS2s. Jack and Daxter's an old feel. Oh, that is a good one. Ratchet and Daxter. W what? <laughs> I've only played one Ratchet and Clank game. I had, I had the <laughs> compulsion to actually pick up a wrench and smack it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Ratchet and Jack. <laughs> uh, I thought it was called a clank and dank. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Clank and Tank sounds like what they do on like a Saturday. <laughs> oh, God. Clank, Dank, and Wang. <laughs> oh no. Oh, sorry, I can't come over. I'm clanking and wanking. <laughs> clanking and wanking and Dank and chopping that meat. I played a Sly Cooper before. I do love Sly Cooper. That Have you was so actually good. finished Sly Cooper? I finished the first one. I loved the first Sly Cooper so much. Like, I would stay up all night with my friend and we would RP, play it together, just listen to music. And like, that was such a good feel. We would just constantly keep handing the controller back and forth if like we got stuck somewhere. And that's the last time I remember being so cooperative with someone on a video game where I didn't get mad. <laughs> huh. You know, a really interesting uh, nostalgic thing that sort of moved between all of us weirdly was Devil May Cry 3. I remember that was one of the first things that you got me into that wasn't Sonic. That I, or Kingdom Hearts that I was like, ooh, this is good. <laughs> you were telling me about it before, and then I went over to Roxas's house, and you had picked it up at a garage sale or something. I did. It was it was like fate almost because I was at a random garage sale. It was in a black box, no cover, no 
know nothing. And I just happened to like pick that one up and be like, that sounds cool. I'm gonna check it out. And we just sat there like all day just playing Devil May Cry 3. And eating pizza. That was a good ass day. Bro, didn't you have like a Dante poster? Isn't that what brought it up? No, I, I can't remember what it was, but I don't think I even ever, I had heard of Devil May Cry 3 before I met you. Or but Devil May Cry in I, general. I swear you had like a poster of Dante on your wall. And I was like, oh, cool, you have a Dante poster. And you were like, who? <laughs> 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 you might have thought it was Dante or something. I don't know, because I definitely do not remember having that. Unless it was maybe in a magazine or something. That sounds, like, really familiar. Yeah. Sexy, edgy men on my wall. Yes. Thinking about nostalgia and all of us and pizza reminds me of, like, walking to Walmart at, like, 2 a.m. to get Totino's pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> And then cooking them in the microwave, and I always said, what's wrong with you guys? I still ate okay. it, though. <laughs> I have to admit, as an absolute degenerate, I started cooking them in the oven again, and I did like that, but then I started cooking them in the microwave again, and I kind of like that more. It's like one of two foods I will cook in the microwave. <laughs> Look, at the risk of sounding like a, a total fat ass, if you cannot take a Totino's pizza, like the dollar pizza, put it in the microwave, Cook it for a couple minutes, roll it up like a burrito, and eat it. Are you really living? Are you really a gamer? That too. How, you, you gotta have like a hand free <laughs> while you're eating your Totino. <laughs> I was gonna imply anything, but then I realized implying uh, nutting when you're eating Totino's is so much better. Look, man, if you jerk off and you eat Totino's pizza at the same time, you're just gonna get pizza crease all over here. <laughs> you take a screenshot. <laughs> 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 Jokes on you, my cum is already drenched in grease. <laughs> Jokes on you, my dick already tastes like Totino's. <laughs> if you get spit roasted by two dudes with like Totino's pizza dick, do you take a screenshot? <laughs> Sponsored by Totino's. That wasn't an invitation or anything. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> I kind of miss like sleepovers. But I, okay, as an adult, I miss people sleeping <laughs> over at my house. <laughs> I hate sleeping at anyone else's house. <clears throat> that is one thing I have noticed. I don't sleep over at anyone else's house anymore. I despise it. There's so much less comfort in it. And I can understand if nobody wants to come over and sleep at my house too, because we just got a couch and some like sheets <laughs> for you. <laughs> but I won't sleep at someone else's house because I don't have my bed there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm an adult. I bought my own bed. Well, no, I didn't. My mom bought it for me. <laughs> my mom actually bought this mattress. We are definitely adults here. Oh. You're an adult with a bed. That's more than some people can say. Yeah. Some gamers out there be living on cardboard in their basement. Oh, I want one of those melee basement setups. No, <laughs> you don't. No, don't say that. That could just be our living room right now. <laughs> Mr. Clammy come melee hands. <laughs> I haven't played melee in like 10 years. We can change that today. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> we can just play Smash Ultimate. It's fine. That I can do. That's as close to Smash like <laughs> nostalgia as I want to get is continuing to play whatever the most recent one is. Because honestly, if you're not a fighting game player or someone who thinks they're a fighting game player and plays Smash, I'm sorry. I'm going to be that guy. But uh, Call me out, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but if you like playing Smash, just play, just play the most recent one. Just play the most recent one. It's fine. It's good. I, I understand people who want to play Melee because it is more technical. But to me, as someone who doesn't want to spend the time learning all that, Melee is like the League of Legends of Smash Brothers. <laughs> That's the most scarily accurate thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Melee is like... Oh, so extremely stinky, toxic community. Maybe like two of your friends play it. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, yikes. I just want to like play Smash for like maybe an hour every other week or so. When friends come over to hang out, we have nothing to talk about. It's like, let's just play Smash. Whatever. We'll play fucking Uno next. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to play like video game Uno or like actual card game Uno? How how like rejected from reality do you want to be, Alex? I didn't say that name right. Dion. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've been saying Aniki all the time, and then I just can't say Dion for some it's reason. It's a little weirder for some reason. I, I'm with you on it. I don't know why. 
<laughs> well, when was the last time... <sighs> We're too old for this now, but when was the last time we all just hung out, played card games, and got drunk? Did we ever do that? Because I might have been so drunk that I don't remember. It's It's been <laughs> at least a year. Oh, wait, I remember, like, Circle of Death, because I don't know how I remember Circle of Death. <laughs> is that a card game, technically, or is I that was just about a drinking game? It. <laughs> it's uh, a drinking game with cards involved. <laughs> yeah. It's not like there's any strategy and you don't have to think very hard. You just draw a card and do what it says. Yeah, I don't I don't know. That's fun. Yeah. If I could stand drinking, I would be interested in doing that again. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I have been kind of vibing with the idea of getting drunk and just hanging out with friends every once in a while lately. Because I, I smoke a lot. It's chill and cool and fun. But it's not quite the same as, like, going fucking hog wild on, like, a... Long Island iced tea and then uh, regretting every moment of it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Getting high is fine when you're alone, but it's not really like a group activity like drinking is. Yeah, if you get a bunch of people, and at least my experience is if you get a bunch of people in the room that are high, you all sit there and maybe someone puts on a meme video and then like you're all just smoking for a bit and then like you say something funny and laugh and then like someone leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone goes to like sit in a corner and rock back and forth and go speaking of sans undertale did you ever actually play undertale i did i actually i beat it nice yeah i remember my very fond memory of taking my tablet with me on a school field trip and i played it on the bus nonstop with my friend and almost choking to death on my gum because of metaton's existence (laughs) are you the person that introduced me to off yeah Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot that you were the one that got me into it, because I thought it was either you or, or another friend of ours. I love getting people off. That's a good joke. Uh-huh. It, it didn't need a laugh, because it was just like, <laughs> I, I, we can appreciate that one. <laughs> Thanks for just stating out loud, wow, that was that was a funny, that was a good <laughs> That one. was really funny of you, Ox. <laughs> That part of the podcast where you said the joke, that was my favorite part. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking Dora the Explorer ass. That was my favorite part. (laughs) Oh my god, can we do that? (laughs) So what was your favorite part (laughs) to the audience? (laughs) You think I have memory to like relay back my favorite part? (laughs) All right, audience. What was your favorite part of this podcast episode? Leave it in the comments below. (laughs) This is so hammy. I hate this. <laughs> Let's never do this again. <laughs> I think we did something similar last episode, which is just gonna... Oh, yeah, we oh. did. I thought I was supposed to fix everything, but I've just <laughs> run it into the ground more. <laughs> That's okay. That's the theme of the podcast. <laughs> it's becoming the theme of the podcast. <laughs> what game did you say you finished most recently? Because I swear I beat it, re- like, already. Oh, Danganronpa. Yeah, that's right. I don't have any nostalgia for that game. <laughs> Me either. I just played it uh, this year. <laughs> oh, remember? Oh my god! Back in January. Oh my god! The nostalgia for January 2021. Um, <laughs> what <a vibe. laughs> I remember. Oh, I first watched Germa, like, (laughs) three months ago. All right, Uh, you say that, but, like, I was thinking of talking about, like, watching Game Grumps. Oh, my God, that is, like, actual nostalgia. I started that when I was in, like, the middle of high school. That was, like, sweet, sweet 2012, you and I, our first apartment. I remember specifically, like, I didn't know who the other Game Grump was going to be, but Aaron had talked about, like, Game Grumps happening, and I was, like, watching the channel, like, okay, I'm ready to see, like, the first first episode. I remember... I didn't actually catch it, but I remember you actually caught, like, the beginning. Yeah, I I watched... Up until October of last year, I had watched every single Game Grumps episode until I just, like, quit cold turkey. Oh, that's a good... Good memories. I remember when, like, Game Grumps came out, and then we all started talking about, like, wow, we should do that someday, and now here we are on a podcast, and maybe... Yeah, maybe we'll play video games together. I remember thinking... Sorry. I was just I was mimicking his maybe. I was like breathing out loud. What the fuck's wrong with me? You sure were, buddy. I was thinking... 
What was I thinking? <laughs> Fuck! Oh, great. Welcome to me being here. I steal everyone's memories. You must piece together the chain of memories, Roxas. I'm not even in that game. <laughs> but aren't you? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it was Game Grumps related. Oh, right. I remember in 2013, when I was first going to start my YouTube channel, when I thought, oh, man, it's already been like a year or or, or two, because I think it was like late 2011 when like Let's Plays were really taking off. Yeah. And I remember it being like mid 2013 and thinking like, I missed the boat. You know, like I can't, I can't jump on game reviews now. I can't jump on creating stuff on YouTube. It's too late. Everyone's got their foot in the door. Everybody's already doing it. Everyone who's ever going to get popular has gotten popular. And no, don't think that. <laughs> yeah, you can start anything at any point and it will work if you just do your best. <laughs> that is all you can do. And have fun with it. The very most important thing I've learned with anything that I want to do is if I'm not having fun with it, it's not going to be great for like anybody and banging on nostalgia is like entirely what this whole deal is about yeah. that's all anyone is doing anymore because that's all we have to talk about baiting nostalgia or just you know trying to recapture something that's already been done is just perpetuating the same old shit from the same old shit that maybe wasn't even that good originally who knows and it's fine if it wasn't even that good originally because you liked it that took a lot of learning on my own part because when I was younger all I wanted to do was just move past stuff and be better and that doesn't mean leaving behind all of the things that you like. Yeah. It's good to take things as you go. Let things build the way you think and the way you want to create. But also have a degree of control on whether or not, you know, if this thing is kind of shitty, maybe I don't want it in my thing. <laughs> yeah, there are ways that you can improve without yeah. just throwing the whole thing freaking thing out. Being aware of the good parts and the bad parts, that's what moving on is. Be nuanced. Have nuanced thoughts. And be nice to yourself. You especially. Stop holding me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> I have emotions. It's podcast time. We can't have physical connections. Yes, I'm not even here. and I'm just a specter and I'm definitely not in the same room. You're a nobody. <gasps> <laughs> wow. The Kingdom Hearts jokes never stop. <laughs> How many allusions to Kingdom Hearts can we make in one episode? Who else am I going to eat ice cream with? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're supposed to say, who else am I going to eat pizza with? <laughs> who else am I going to eat Totino's with? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Tim and Eric in that scene. Oh my, God. <laughs> my feminine pizza bag! <laughs> Instead of a big black coat, it's just a pink <laughs> fanny pack full of Totino's. Oh my god. <laughs> Totino's 13. The keyblade is just the pizza roll on chair. Wait, wait, wait. Thirteenos. <laughs> Thirteenos. 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 And all of them are like different Totino's brand products like there's the pizza rolls there's the pizzas <laughs> the little hot pocket things they made fucking <laughs> axel's chakras are just big fucking totino's <laughs> pizzas <laughs> so good. well i'd like to reiterate that this is not sponsored <laughs> i mean totino's if you're listening <laughs> Yeah, we'd like we'd like to talk about you more on the podcast for money, sure. Wait, people are gonna listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> you would know you were like the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you listen to every single one of our episodes, and that kind of means that you got on. Weird how that works, huh? Weird. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> we we do not have any favoritism in viewership. I've just been with you guys since I was like ten years old. Has it been that long? Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're like a couple years old, younger than us. I keep forgetting that, to be honest. You exist around us, and then after high school age is meaningless. So <laughs> This is very true. <laughs> I remember when you were a twink, you had long hair, and I wore dress shirts all the time. Uh, the internet has never known me as a twink, and they never will. <laughs> <laughs> they can't catch me, twinks. <laughs> <laughs> you can't prove I was ever a twink. <laughs> <laughs> is that going to be the new Kingdom Hearts plot? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Xehanort. <laughs> Yo, Twink was Xehanort. a Twink. He, can he was a Twink in high school. Oh, my God. It's fucking. Okay. Uh, we, we can't. Never mind. Never mind. We cannot get into Kingdom Hearts theory stuff. <laughs> no, no. Go for it. Go okay. for it. This is exactly so, what the podcast is there for. There are a couple of visual things about Kingdom Hearts. Probably spoilers for Kingdom Hearts. But at this point, if you don't know and you don't care, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but young Xehanort looks like Terranort, doesn't he? Yeah. Right. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but also, Sora, Vanitas looks like Sora, but Vanitas, oh no, 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 actually that one makes sense, because I think Ventus's soul went into, like, heal in Sora's heart before he split into Vanitas and Ventus. Yeah. So that one's clear, yeah. never mind. But, like, the Terranort and the Xehanort, is that just, like, a? they kind of look similar because they're, I don't know, that's just the way it is. <laughs> the thing with Kingdom Hearts is, at the end of the day, there's always gonna be the deeper meaning. There's always gonna be, they're like gonna build off of that. I swear to God, that's gonna be a fucking plot point. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, I'm, I'm on to Namora and his Namora verse with Tui, Tui 2, or whatever the sequel is called. Tootie. Tui Tootie? Tui 2, fresh and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Please pay us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the secret ending for Kingdom Hearts 3 had like the whole Shibuya setting and then he's obviously salty about being kicked off of 15 still so he's keeping his own version of 15 alive in his Nomura verse. It's all gonna connect I guarantee it. <laughs> 15 years later. I also noticed something. He has never included a character in Kingdom Hearts from Final Fantasy that he hasn't designed because he designed Selt Set Setzer I believe. Did he really? Yeah he there was a couple of characters in 6 that he designed oh. and Setzer was one of them. Did he design Vivi? I don't Does that know. Count? That actually might not be true on that one, yeah. For the most part, at least. Most of the characters in Kingdom Hearts are characters that he's... The girls from 10? Yeah, he definitely did artwork for 10. Huh. I never even put that together. I'm telling you, it's a Nomura cinematic universe. <laughs> <laughs> There's a certain line where I have to be like, kind of get over it and make your own thing without it being too large. Like, dude, Kingdom Hearts has Disney stuff in it. I'm going to be that guy. How full of yourself do you have to be to create a universe that just has Disney stuff in it? Do you know what I mean? Like, this is my... My universe. My universe with Aladdin and Belle and, <laughs> and the Little Mermaid. If I could snatch some of that Disney money at that opportunity and get a one up on Disney, I absolutely would. I wouldn't even want to touch it. That's but... true at the same time for me also. <laughs> but given the quote unquote, you know, the infamous elevator opportunity that I think that was disproved. It wasn't a Square Enix developer and a Disney executive in an elevator going like, oh, let's make Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> it was like a more intricate normal process than that I'm sure <laughs> it's our fun little backstory that has no relevance or significance just like all of Kingdom Hearts well honestly the thing about video game development is that it's about as mundane as that so if, if it literally was just two execs who happen to be in the same bill at the same time going like I don't know what if we uh, what if we just made a franchise off of both of these things at the same time okay this makes more sense Nomura just turned into like bet Sephiroth could beat me Mickey Mouse's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse ain't shit. <laughs> and whoever the Disney exec is being like, oh yeah, that, we, we should do something like this. You can we say should like, make a Mickey, thing. Mickey Mouse doesn't have a sword. <gasps> or does he? <laughs> just like making out as the elevator doors open. Oh no. <laughs> it got like way too sexual attention in there. Not everything competitive needs to be sexual. That's why I play fighting games, though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you were beating my ass as cum Zato literally like an hour or two ago. <laughs> Shout out to the one person listening that might get that reference. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Always. <laughs> we're literally, like, anyone listening is, like, the one person that's listening. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we've invited the audience onto the podcast. <laughs> Give yourself a message for the future. <laughs> uh, Riku Mickey is canon forever by... He speaks the truth. You might not like it, but he's speaks.
the truth. <laughs> I thought you were just going to say, you might not like it, but he speaks. <laughs> <laughs> he sure do be saying things, though. <laughs> <laughs> My brain doesn't think ahead. It just kind of lets it happen. I'm just glad that we can make fun of Kingdom Hearts and like it at the same time. Because as a kid, I did not have the emotional capacity to do that. Nowadays, I can be like, Dante's a fucking tool, but I love him. I can look at like, you'll pay for this, or did somebody <laughs> say door to darkness and Mickey's voice? And then also look at like that secret scene from Kingdom Hearts, was it one or two, where it's like Riku and Rox is fighting in like the tower, and they're like running down the tower, and it's like dark and raining. And That's the secret and... ending, the one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That, especially back in the day, was the coolest shit. They broke out the dual wielding keyblades. You're like, excuse me, that's in, we have that coming to us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, the hype train to Kingdom Hearts 2 was unreal. So I think when people looked at Kingdom Hearts 3, they were expecting like that next evolution. And then there just <laughs> never was one. I think that's the ultimate disappointment of Kingdom Hearts 3. Because you play like the whole series. You play like Dream Drop Distance and all of this other stuff. I'm not going to list every title because that would take me four hours. But you play all of those DS games <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and they're mainline series games games that continue the story and then you get to Kingdom Hearts 3 and it references everything and everybody's involved and it tries to like resolve all of their storylines but it doesn't do it in a way that also elevates the concept. That's what has me a bit excited about the next wherever Kingdom Hearts is going because that secret ending to 3 had major like Kingdom Hearts 1 secret ending vibes especially in like the overly blown out lighting <laughs> in the darkness <laughs> around the, everyone and just the ominousness of it all. Especially now that we have such a clean slate for Kingdom Hearts, it feels like whatever's coming next has a very good potential to be a direct evolution. And I really hope it goes that way. Yeah, I don't know if I'll feel the same way. Because I, I felt like Kingdom Hearts 3 had such a resolution feeling that whatever comes next needs to be decidedly not called Kingdom Hearts. I can see it probably still be Kingdom Hearts, but it'll be like vastly different. Or maybe it will go like Virum Rex direction and or have its own title. It could technically. I want to see Nomura be given like his own series that's not Final Fantasy and it's not Kingdom Hearts. It's just its own thing. Like let him be crazy and do his shit without all of the like baggage attached. Yeah, that would be nice. Well, I guess that's not quite what, like, Advent Children and things like that are, because he was still running off of a pre-created concept. Here we go, me simping for Advent Children again. <laughs> the one guy on the internet doing that. It's just so insane, it's fun. When you see them jump in midair and, like, stand on their swords and fight, that's when you know, alright, this is past the level of insane to where, like, I'm just supposed to have fun. You just turn your brain clean off, it's fucking amazing. Advent Children it is quite a nostalgic thing now that I think about it. It wasn't the first Final Fantasy experience I ever had, but it was like the one that got me back into it. Because I had played 9 on PS1 years before that, but I was too young to get past that first boss in the forest where a garnet's captured in the plant and you gotta fight with Vivi. I never got past that, and I also didn't have a save card, so I couldn't get past that no matter what. <laughs> I'll remember when video game consoles had to have a save card. Again, being the rich child, I remember buying Final Fantasy XI and it came with a hard drive for your PS2 so you could install Final Fantasy XI to your PS2. And I remember never having to buy another memory card ever again because it was, I believe, a gig hard drive. God. Whoa. And <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. The, the memory cards for a PS2 were eight megabytes. It was like having a hundred memory cards. God. It really was cheaper, too. And during the memory card drought, yeah, it was good. It was good to have. Especially for you who, like, you know, played any and every game you could put your hands on. I had over 300 PS2 games. I don't have them today because GameStop happened. It's scary how, like, small of a fraction of the PS2 library that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And I rented many more. Oh. There are games that I wish I knew the name of that I only ever played once. There is a game to this day. I swear I either rented it, played it on a demo disc, played a demo on Xbox Live or 
something, but I cannot find it. I thought it was a Heroes of Might and Magic game. I thought that's what it is. I cannot find it for the life of me. Had a grid-based inventory, was kind of like a hack and slash game. I remember being like, I don't know, an elf with white hair. That's it. I have general vibes. I'll know it when I see it, but otherwise it's gone. This is absolutely not anything I don't think either one of you can relate to. But one thing that's been interesting to see talked about again, for me nostalgia-wise, especially since Thor High Heels has been talking about it, is Evergrace. Because I played that a lot as a kid because we bought it from a game exchange. Oh, it was in real shitty condition. But that game scared the piss out of me. It's so goddamn ominous. And I was like still like even like 12 or 13 and I was like... I don't, mm, it's creepy. I don't play it. I can't save. <laughs> <laughs> That's the scariest part of all. <laughs> but I really, really want to go back and play it. This is going to sound weird, but my Evergrace was uh, Orphan, the Sign of Sorcery. <laughs> I just remember like really early on in the game, like you're on a boat and like it gets attacked by like a sea monster. It's just got this like real creepy vibe to it. And then he says all of his spells, like, out loud. Hand of Pyro! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it's, that just Skyrim? It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Skyrim, you're literally just saying your moves out loud, but in Draconic. It's the same anime bullshit. I love it. Was the PS2 era as much of, like, a weird, horny awakening for you all as it was for me? Because I remember seeing Titty in God of War. And you could have sex in Grand Theft Auto. Uh, no. I didn't really have... <laughs> I wanted to keep that, like, as far away from video games as possible. So when I saw that in video games for the first time, I was like, this is uncomfortable. I don't like this. It wasn't until probably... God, I think it was like late high school was the first time I ever downloaded like a porn game. And then I was like, this is the future. <laughs> <laughs> I can click a button to hump? Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> the future is now, old man. <laughs> oh, that's that's actually really nostalgic is like the Newgrounds flash animations of really shitty drawn porn, but you still kind of get off to it because it's like, that's what you had. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like JPEGs of nipples like not not quite clipping like <laughs> off of the titty a little bit. The fucking like weird Evangelion ones and the Azamanga Dao things. <laughs> yeah, in hindsight, weird and creepy. Yeah. I don't think Newgrounds is a site for like things that aren't weird and creepy. <laughs> yes, that's, <laughs> that's very true. true. That's very, very true. But like as kids, it's what you had when you were 15 and horny and didn't know any better. I you remember. type booba into Google. <laughs> You type booba into Newgrounds, that's what you got. I remember when the Tumblr porn purge happened and everyone was like, go to Newgrounds, no, go to Newgrounds. I was like, mm, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because trying to make Newgrounds have a resurgence because it got like a site redesign and they were up and running again. And it was just, it was just not going to happen. Y'all remember Brawl Taunts? Oh my God. <laughs> Brawl Taunts. We got in trouble oh with your God. dad because of Brawl Taunts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were all it was like you me my, all all my family we kept quoting brawl taunts someone said up the butt charizard and we heard from the other room my dad go no up the butt charizard <laughs> yeah, that also leads me to a very good memory of your little brother <laughs> who was passing by and trying to watch us play smash and your older brother had his name is homo and your dad was also playing with us and the littlest brother goes who's homo dad is that you <laughs> <laughs> I, love that. <laughs> I didn't know about that story. That's hilarious. <laughs> Brawl was such a degenerate fun time. Uh, it's right up there with like the Super Nintendo stuff. Do you remember that fucking animation of like Pokemon Snap I Triple was just X? Thinking about oh that. my god! <laughs> now we're really just getting into like some really deep memory. I'm shit. ashamed of how much I kind of like the appeal of the way some of those are drawn. Yeah, I'm gonna be that guy and be like, as a horny teenager, I was like, this is a hot. <laughs> I, I'm a furry and other people might think this is funny, but this is hot. They don't know what they're missing. <laughs> and then there was an uncensored version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Did you just make an mmm noise? <laughs> I don't know what that was. It was supposed to be a hmm, but the, it turned out hmm. <laughs> Uh-oh, someone's nervous. <laughs> Uh-oh, somebody's horny. <laughs> I'm you horny, Jill. Time out. I remember something about Star Fox climbing up on a platform, and then Crystal is, like, frozen in the gem or whatever, and then Star Fox is trying to, like, look up her skirt while she's in the gem. <laughs> God, that era definitely spawned, like, a ton of furries. Crystal was, like, the major fur bait. It was Renamon. It is still kind of is Renamon and Crystal. I, I had a Renamon phase, but I I really never had, like, a Crystal phase. I was never super into that. I still know at least, like, one or two friends who are super into Crystal. In fact, I remember when uh, Ultimate was coming out, maybe it was Smash 4, but they revealed Crystal as a assist trophy, and they forgot to... I mean, there wasn't anything there, but they didn't give her any underwear. <laughs> and so you could see right up there. I was like, I sent a few pictures to my friend. I was like, hey, look. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so of the era. I was still lusting after... God, what was I lusting after? That Lola period? Bunny. <laughs> I, I was a little bit past the Lola Bunny phase, though. Because I, I had I had a Lola Bunny phase, and then I had a Cat Girl phase. Dear God, the Cat Girl phase. Oh, God. Oh, man. Wait, what do you mean? Face. <laughs> you find it. Yes, you, it was a face. You, you guys had faces. A stray cat girl on your doorstep. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Because th- that's that's the thing is like people joke about the stray cat girl thing. People have those phases. You cannot tell me that the people laughing at those memes did not at some point nut to cat girl porn. Because you know they did. I don't think I ever had a cat girl phase because I'm just too much of a big fucking bottom and cat girls are definitely like a bottom archetype, I would say. Yeah, the they, whole like dog bowl and collar thing. Yeah, they can have, like, it doesn't have to be that way, but that is like a majority of the content, I would say. <laughs> like, angry cat girls is definitely the direction that I would still lean in. I've just been wanting to get stepped on since like day one, apparently. <laughs> Nothing's changed. The more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's the central message of this podcast episode. <laughs> of this podcast, period. <laughs> Maybe we should change the name of the podcast. I, I like that we grabbed this before anyone else could. I still refuse to say it out loud. <laughs> it's so goofy. <laughs> but I feel like someone else could have definitely snatched it up by now. And I, we could have, like, totally leaned into, like, the radio voice kind of thing. Welcome to the Awamates Podcast! <laughs> oh, oh, man, you really, like, physically made me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I woke up. <laughs> we, need we need like a radio DJ soundboard. <laughs> just call me in. It's me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Where's my foghorn? <laughs> I was going to play one right there. <laughs> it's fine. You know where to play it now. <laughs> so episode in review. Kingdom oh. Hearts. Nostalgia is good, but do not let it rule you. Yeah, I, a lot of people like let nostalgia rule them. They're so hell bent on experiencing that one thing again that they just want that one thing again. If you, Be open to new experiences to have nostalgia with later. If you live in the past, you will never move on to the future. Is that a Kingdom Hearts quote? No, I'm just being pretentious. <laughs> Anything can be a Kingdom Hearts quote. Anything pretentious can be a Kingdom Hearts quote. Bouncing off of what you said, um, don't live in the past because you are like literally crumbling your present as you live. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. But enjoy what you enjoy. Yes. Don't let nostalgia blind you, but also don't let your present self be blind to any nostalgia or any cringe. Yeah, if you are holding yourself back because you think like your old memories are cringe, don't. And if you're holding yourself back because you just want to experience that one thing that was the best thing you ever did again, try new things. Both of things are true. Balance. Yes. If we're sending mixed signals and confusing you, good. (laughs) (laughs) Sort it out yourself. We aren't therapists. (laughs) Not for free, we're not. (laughs) That's a really (laughs) weird place to end it. Can we say something else, please? (laughs) 
I cannot believe you're not comfortable with ending the podcast there. What do you want to end the podcast on? We love you very much. <laughs> What was your favorite part? <laughs> Leave it in the comments below. Hold on, I'm typing my comment right now. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notification. Uh, it will only notify you once every couple weeks. It, w it won't trouble you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by Totino's. <laughs> Not sponsored by Totino's! Totino's!